So football is still the big thing on the Sports Max Zone for this Monday. The first leg of the Ren Nephew Jamaica Premier League semi-finals took place on Sunday. And similar to the first legs of the quarterfinals, there was nothing to separate the teams. Last season's beaten finalists, Cavalier, needed a Jalmaro Calvin equalizer. He's from Antigua and Barbuda to settle their clash at one all. This after Jaheem National Thomas gave Arnett Gardens the lead in their contest. It was the same scoreline in the contest between Waterhouse and Mount Pleasant with Javain Bran, now the league's top scorer with 17 goals, opening the scoring for Waterhouse before Sula Makala, as uh, he tends to do, popped up with the leveler with a header. Here's what all four coaches had to say following the matches. A little bit disappointed with the way we um, execute for, for some parts of the game based on what we discussed and what we know was coming at us. I didn't think we handled some of the situations good. I didn't think we make some good decisions, you know. Um, and, and, and for that, that I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. But happy that we're, we're heading into the next leg um, and we're not trailing. Yeah, I mean, Arnett Garden, you know, started tentatively. We had the upper hand, but they came into their own. And then they got the goal against the runner play and that kind of energized them. But I thought it was a pretty good game from both teams. I'm fit enough for a semi final. I think we um, lost a little bit of concentration and that set piece. Uh, it's a learning process for us as well, but at this stage I think we should have um, dealt with that pretty well. I think we, we did some good stuff tonight. You know, we created numerous scoring opportunities, but um, I, I think it, what cost us this afternoon was the final action in the final third. But um, again, we still have a week to get ourselves, brush ourselves off and, and come next Sunday. Yeah, so we heard the coaches and uh, our Sportsmax football analyst, Leger Williams, joins us in studio now to recap what happened in these matches at Sabina Park on Sunday evening. I want to start, Lige, with the Arnett Gardens Cavalier game. Um, I saw Rudolph Speed on the eve of the match on local television saying that he was little, a little concerned about his team's match sharpness because they hadn't played for, for so many weeks and they were unable to get practice matches. Um, did you see any evidence of Cavalier looking ring rusty in the match yesterday? Yes, sir, Lance, you know, I, I think you're a fan of boxing, so I think you would know sometimes the fighters going into big fights would, you know, try and throw off their opponents a little bit because that was definitely not the case with Cavalier yeah. uh, at the start of this game. I was a bit concerned about both Cavalier and Mount Pleasant coming into the game because I thought each team would have a little bit of little bit of a lack of match sharpness. I think that was the case for Mount Pleasant, which we'll get on to. But in the case of Cavalier, I think both their game plan from Coach Speed's point of view and how the players executed it was top, top notch, especially in that first half. Yes, they fell behind, you know, due to a goal against run of play by Arnett Gardens, but general rule of thumb, I, I think I think Cavalier are actually fantastic. Not a lot of teams in the Jamaica Premier League can execute a press to that level and I think several like I think for the first 20 minutes or so they executed I think I counted five high turnovers which led to shots and I think that's excellent whichever the league wherever you're playing football so I think Cavalier were really good they pressed well they created a lot of chances they were unfortunate a bit with their finishing I guess that's where you could say the sharpness they weren't as sharp as they needed to be because they didn't finish that well but I think when it came down to it I, I, I think Cavalier were really good. Um, probably should have been 2-3 up in that first 30 minutes. But if you don't take your chances, that's always going to be something that you leave yourself susceptible to. And that's falling behind. Arnett Gardens did a really good job of growing into the game. And even to show you how rattled Arnett Gardens were a bit in the 28th minute, they made a substitution not because of any injury. 28th minute? 28th minute. Within yeah, the Rashid, first half an hour? Yeah, Rashane yeah. Thompson came off for Shea Smith. Um, not necessary to change too much of their tactical plan, but just to shuffle up the personnel because, as Coach Zeva Gilbert said after the game, things just weren't sticking for them. And after that, we saw Arnett starting to gradually grow into the game. The second half was a different story, but for the first half, definitely, I didn't see any rust or lack of sharpness from Cavalier. Yeah, talk to us quickly about the young Antigua and Barbuda player, Jam Jalmaro Calvin, who got Cavalier's goal. I think 12 goals now on the season for the young man. I actually saw him on local TV as well the day before the game, and he was confident. He pretty much uh, anticipated or predicted that he would score. Well, he did say he would score a hat-trick, which didn't quite happen, but, <laughs> but he, he, was <laughs> he, he got an important goal. How good is this young man? Yeah, he's, he's quality. You know, he had his struggles last season. Couldn't really break into the team, but of course, Cavalier had Colin Anderson, so it was always going to yes. be difficult for him to break in. But even when he was playing, he wasn't necessarily playing you know, his best stuff. This season, uh, he's gotten consistent playing time and he's gotten a lot of trust to play all across the front three for Cavalier. 
which is not easy to do for any top team in the league. And I think he's delivered for the most part and he's looked pretty good. And he's been scoring goals. He could have had more than one yesterday if his decision making was a bit better. But I think the most important thing is that he's getting himself getting himself in this dangerous in these dangerous um, places all around the box, in and around the box. And he's not only a goal scorer, pretty good creativity wise as well. So Calvin, I think he he has a good eye for goal and you know you can't be surprised when Cavalier on Earth a really good young talent. Yeah, I'm gonna touch a bit on Arnett because of course their captain had to be substituted. How did that affect the game? Well, you, you know, surprisingly, I thought that he would have, because I was on commentary for the game, and I thought that yeah. that would have impacted Arnett Gaines much, much more severely than it did. Uh, I think yeah, Warner Brown came on. Yeah, because Fabian Reed is such a big deal for Arnett Gaines, not only with his goal scoring, not only with his creativity, not only with his holder play, not only with his defensive work rate, but just his leadership overall on the pitch. Uh, I think that they'll miss him a lot in the second leg, but in the First leg, like Warner Brown came on and did a pretty admirable job. They were still creating chances. They probably could have scored one of those chances later. And Shea Smith had a couple that he probably should have scored and probably knows that he should have scored as well. So I do think that this this, this Arnett team, yes, they'll miss Fabian Reed. There was a, that's a very big deal. Fabian Reed has been fantastic since coming back into the Arnett Garrens team this season. And that's a huge, huge loss. That's a player that... That's, as you mentioned uh, last week, I believe, Sir Lance, that's a player that knows how to win yes. at this level, uh, having won the title in 2017. So, big loss, that's Fabian Reed. Yeah, and Waterhouse and Mount Pleasant, same result, won all between both teams. You spoke about the fact that you felt as if the match fitness and being ready was more apparent in the Mount Pleasant team. I felt the same way. Um, goals of course coming for Mount Pleasant coming on to the end but I was a bit disappointed because I felt like Mount Pleasant had so many different opportunities Lish, but they were not able to get that ball in the back of the net yeah as I said I think their sharpness was called into question a bit more and I think it's not necessarily down to how sharp they were match wise but in terms of understanding tempo they're a team that relies a lot on tempo when to play slow when to speed things up they're probably the team that understands that the best in the Jamaica Premier League and last night they didn't really show too much of that ability they were playing really slow especially in the first half and you could see whenever they sped it up that's when their chances would come they scored an offside goal really early in the game we saw Daniel Green test we saw Devante Campbell test and they were they, were, they had their moments in the first half yes but I think they really got into the tempo and the groove of things after Waterhouse got that goal and yes. that's really when we saw Mount Pleasant start to really come into their own and create chances at will, really. But I still think there are a couple of things that they need to sort out because when they're playing at that slower tempo, that's going to invite the Waterhouse press on you. And Waterhouse have a very unique press. It's not as aggressive as a Cavalier, Cavalier press is. It's more they're going to be in the right place at the right time. So when you make that mistake, they're always ready to pounce and jump. We saw that in the quarterfinals against... Tivoli Gaines, where they scored all three of their goals in the quarterfinals in that manner by being able to pounce on mistakes. And they did it a couple of times pretty well. Javain Bryan had a pretty good chance in the, at the end of the first half in, the, in that game as well. So, yeah. yeah, Waterhouse are a pretty quality team. They're surprising a few people, I think. But they have an injury problem themselves because Javain Bryan was forced off in the 90th minute yeah. with a shoulder injury. And he's the leading JPL scorer yeah, exactly. with 17 goals. Uh, and he's scored in every single playoff game he's played this season. So he's a, obviously a very integral player for Waterhouse. So that, that's going to be a big miss for them if he can't compete in the next leg. So it's going to be interesting and that's going to be something to look out for. I was also really thrilled about the turnout, the Waterhouse fans, Lish. I mean, I'm not one to, to attend the JPL matches like you because when they're on, sometimes we're here on set. But the Waterhouse fans were out in their numbers and I think, you know, sometimes you don't realise how much the fans affect the games because to the point where a Waterhouse fan was saying to me that my team sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, how do you know who my team is? You know, Maya, everybody knows who your team is. Now, Serland said it. Said, as long as Serland says something on live television, everyone is believing that and that's what we're going so with. So a random Waterhouse fan said to me that my team sucks. Yeah, that, that, that's it. You're just going to have to accept that from now on next week. When oh, you they did say they're bringing me a Waterhouse shoot. I just remembered as, as I... No, Sir Lance, we need, we, need, we, need to, we need to fix that. This, this, this cannot be happening at this point. Somebody she, said that to me. She's getting shirts from all angles. Yeah, yeah. Just now I might have a yeah. store. I, I was saying before we started the segment, though, Lish, that 
I think Mount Pleasant has a surplus of riches. There's so much quality on their bench and a lot of quality players not getting much playing time. The young Trini, Nathaniel James, when he came on last night, lit up the park. Yes. Made you feel as if he should have been on the field from earlier. Yes. Yeah, he's electric, but yes. if, if you think about the position that, yes, he plays attacking midfield generally, but if you think about who he came on for in Kimoni Bailey. Yes. yes. Are, are you going to bench Kimoni Bailey <laughs> in a big game like this where you've seen him deliver and he's been one of the best players in Jamaica Premier League this season? When you think about their attacking midfield position in Daniel Green, he's Mount Pleasant's leading goal scorer this season. And he didn't start the season, did he? Yeah, exactly. So yes, it, yes. it just goes to show, as you yeah, said, the wealth of riches. Quality, yeah. the, the quality that they have players that weren't even in the squad yesterday. So, yeah, Mount Pleasant, they're, they're a cheat code. That's, that's why I have them winning the entire thing. But they do have a very good Waterhouse team to try yeah, and usurp yeah. in the second leg. And it's good to see Waterhouse improving at the right time of the season because during the regular season, there was a lot of concern about Waterhouse's consistency. You said something a few minutes ago that um, when Mount Pleasant quickened the pace of their game and stopped playing the slower version of the game, they looked a lot more threatening. There are people I know who watch Mount Pleasant who think there are too many lateral passes and too many back passes in their game, which is a part of the slow, methodical build-up, I, I would think. Do you have an issue with that? No, I okay. don't have an issue with it because it's a continental way of playing football. It's not, you see, huh. Tell how, us. Much, how much time do we have? <laughs> no, not long. Producer says two minutes. Two I, I minutes think, that, that, that's so that's one time. minute now. Yes, yes. So, let, let, so let me think. All right, so... There are cultural ways in which people like to see sports being done. Yes. So if you think about it, even from a cricket standpoint, West Indian people like to say big shots, you know, that no singles and tippy top yes, stuff. Yes, yes. It's similar with football. They like to see the aggression. Even last night, if you saw Ladale Richie tackle, an obvious dirty challenge, but everyone in the crowd is railing up and saying, yes. That was a charge on, challenge on Denada Thomas. Yeah, on the line. That, that's not something that should be welcomed in football. So it's a similar thing when it comes down to passing the ball. Yeah. And Jamaican players and people always want the ball to go forward as quickly as possible. Yeah. Sometimes you have to slow things down yes, yes. to take the pace out of things and then quicken it up and leave yeah. the defenders on their back foot. And I'll finish this small soliloquy by saying that Pep Guardiola once said a back pass isn't the indication of fear it's a, it's a way to start a new and improved attack. So yeah. that's why you must look on lateral and back passes, depending on your team. But that's you're, how I see it personally. You're a wise man. You're, you're citing Pep Guardiola as an <laughs> Arsenal man. That speaks volumes. Well, that's all the time we have for Lish today. We're going to take a break and come back. <laughs>